All right, so I want to talk about non-playable characters, also known as NPCs. And as an NPC myself, I feel it is my job to fairly and accurately represent my people. While they may not be the most revolutionary or important topic when discussing video games, that's not going to stop me from wasting the next about nine minutes or so talking about them. I love NPCs. They've been pretty much around from the very beginning of gaming itself. Originally, NPCs were used in tabletop games such as Dungeons & Dragons to flesh out the world and introduce side characters, and so naturally it did not take that long for video game developers to eventually bring the idea of a non-playable character over to the digital world. The term NPC can encompass many different things since it's such a broad definition. Of course, any character in a video game that a player cannot directly control is considered an NPC. But there are tons of subcategories to NPCs such as the merchant or the quest NPCs or even enemies in video games can be considered NPCs. However, enemies are more typically referred to as mobiles or mobs for short. But the non-playable characters I am particularly interested in for this discussion are the NPCs that are truly there to serve no other purpose other than simply existing. You may assume that these are the least worthy NPCs to talk about, and you'd be correct. But like I've said, that isn't going to stop me from talking about them. I would dare to consider this type of NPC to be the backbone of video game worlds in terms of realism and world building. If done right, these NPCs can make the world feel so lived in and ambient. Nothing makes a world feel more alive than, well, having quote unquote people living in it. I think the best way to explain this is by example. Look at the game series Grand Theft Auto with its large city environments and take away all of the civilian NPCs that walk around the map and what do you have left? Well, that's pretty much just Burnout at that point. A great game, don't get me wrong, but if you've played both Burnout or any GTA game, you can know that the worlds feel completely different from one another. The NPCs in GTA make the experience of driving or running around the map just that much better. Seeing a crowd of people lined up outside of a club or going into a gas station and seeing an NPC there just makes the world feel so alive. And while I do very much enjoy this aspect of non-playable characters and how they can affect the worlds that they're placed in, what really got me thinking about NPCs so much was simply, they're just funny. Those people lined up outside the club in GTA? It's hilarious to just drive up on the sidewalk and watch them all try and jump out of the way. That guy in the gas station? Pull out a gun! Watch him try to run away as he's screaming. These interactions that you can have are completely unique to gaming and without the NPC they would be completely impossible. You can't have any of these experiences without the NPCs. And some games just nail the non-playable characters so, ever so perfectly. Obviously, I've just given GTA out as an example, and that game has amazing and very well-known NPCs, but if I had to say there is one game, one game in particular that is almost infamously known for its NPCs, it would have to be The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I would bet money this game is what popularized the concept and idea of an NPC. The Elder Scrolls series as a whole has hilariously amazing NPCs, but Skyrim just tops it all. The amount of just awkward enough and stiff animations, the overuse of what are now very iconic voice lines in gaming, and the glitchy actions that some of these NPCs take are just amazing. I'm sure we've all seen one of those random town villagers in Skyrim just walk in, push a table or set of chairs across the room, or sit down backwards on a seat. There's just so much these NPCs do that's just peak comedy if you pay attention. And while I'm focusing on the humorous part of Skyrim NPCs, they are also really unique in the world. If you kill an NPC in Skyrim, they're not coming back. Each person in Skyrim is their own person with their own life. I've got this pile of dead cultists outside one of my houses in the game because their bodies just don't despawn because they themselves don't respawn. It's a really good execution of world building that goes to show just how well the non-playable characters are in this game. And while I could go on and on about Skyrim's NPCs, another game that has iconic and memorable NPCs is Oddly enough, Super Mario Odyssey. I replayed this game recently and forgot just how random some of the kingdom civilians can be if you aren't used to the game. The New Donk City Kingdom has uncanny, realistic people straight from a PS2 game. And then a few kingdoms away in Luncheon Kingdom, you've got sentient forks and spoons. It's a strange set of NPCs for sure, but it goes a long way towards making each area of the game feel very unique and different from one another. I was really glad to see Nintendo get creative with their NPCs instead of just littering toads everywhere, which has gotten them a lot of criticism in some of their recent games. But while these unique and quirky and 
downright whimsical at times, NPCs can be fun and are great for adding character to each kingdom, it does bring up one very important point when discussing NPCs. There is a certain art when designing non-playable characters for a video game. A designer needs to strike that perfect balance between making them believable for the world they are in, while also ensuring that they are entertaining enough not to just blend in too much and go unseen. If an NPC is too cartoonish for a world going for realism, well, the immersion between the player and the game would be shattered. All non-playable characters in a video game need to feel like they belong in the game it was designed for. You can't just have a game set in a fantasy world with knights and wizards and then your shopkeeper is an outdated racial stereotype of an Arabian trader. Oh boy. Super Mario Odyssey may have had a cartoonish and bizarre NPC set, but they all feel like they belong in the colorful worlds that they were designed for. It strikes that balance of making some really fun and memorable NPCs for the game. A game whose NPCs are infinitely made better by the realism of the game has to be Red Dead Redemption 2. You could easily make hours and hours discussing the details that are in this game and its world, and a big part of that has to be because of the NPCs. Each person you come across feels real and alive in the world of Red Dead 2. And all of the animals in the game feel the same way, and by definition are NPCs themselves. And to a somewhat lesser extent, I feel the same way about Marvel's Spider-Man for PlayStation. You'll hardly ever notice while swinging high above the streets, but if you take the time to walk around the sidewalks, the New Yorkers in this game are amazing. You can even wave and interact with them. Each feel like a real person trying to just go about their lives in the city. But, if you know anything about Marvel's New York, they're making a huge mistake by living there in the first place, so maybe not the most realistic civilians after all. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about these type of NPCs, but I do think it's worth bringing up how important even the slightest dialogue with an NPC can be. Being able to interact with certain non-playable characters can help drive a player forward or give them information about the world they're in. The most obvious use of this is the quest NPC. These are the NPCs with a giant exclamation mark above their head and will explicitly tell you what to do and exactly where to go. Maybe not the best mechanic for world building or storytelling, but it'd be hard for me to argue that it isn't a great way to tell players exactly what needs to be done. Almost every RPG known to man will have these type of NPCs, but just because you have an NPC that tells the player what to do doesn't mean it needs to be so straightforward. Terraria has an NPC known as the Guide who is there in your world from the very beginning. You were able to ask this NPC for help and he will respond with stuff relevant to your progression at that point in the game. But honestly, unless you have tons of hours in the game, good luck trying to figure out what he's trying to tell you. Another useful NPC for your game to have is the Merchant NPC. These are as simple as having someone at a counter for you to buy things from. I never thought I would see the day where a game backpedaled in this aspect, but you can easily see the result of having the lack of a Merchant NPC in games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Pokemon has always had NPCs that you could walk up to and buy things from, but for some reason, most of the stores in Scarlet and Violet are just a door you walk up to and buy things at. They didn't even bother modeling the inside of the store. So yeah, all this to say that not only are NPCs here just to fill out the world and make them feel more lived in, but they can also serve the very important role of directing a player or giving them information that otherwise the game would struggle to deliver. So yeah, that's roughly the basis of NPCs. Sure, you could go more into it, but I really just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about how often overlooked this aspect of gaming is. I'm sure it would be easy to go through hundreds of hours of gameplay and never once think about the non-playable characters wandering around- Whoa, whoa, whoa what, are you, what are you doing? You can't just skip through all my dialogue. I'm not actually an NPC!